Well, let me introduce you to Cassie J, who's an award-winning documentary maker. But her latest film struggled to find funding and has been banned from certain cinemas. Here's a clip from Cassie's new film, The Red Pill. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an historic moment. Never before has there been a gathering of this magnitude to support men's and boys' issues. We have got serious problems. That is a clip from The Red Pill, and I'm very happy to say that Cassie joins me now. Cassie J, hello. Hi. Hello. So The Red Pill is you exploring the men's rights movement, a group that describe themselves as activists, believing that men are now voiceless in society, in part because of the rise of feminism. Have I summarised that? Yes, that's pretty accurate, yeah. Okay. Actually, exactly, yes. <laughs> okay, good. I like, I'm happy I got that right. So, well, hang on, why did you... You describe yourself as a feminist, but you've been attacked, haven't you, for a sympathetic view of this kind of men's activism. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, I, I started making this film in 2013, and at that point I'd already been a feminist of about 10 years, and all my previous documentary work was focused on women's issues or sexuality, LGBT issues. Uh, and when I came across the online men's rights movement, I uh, was shocked. I'd never heard of this before. I uh, was very uncomfortable by the idea of it. And so I thought I'd, I'd make a film about it. And turned out along my year-long journey, I learned the many ways that men are disadvantaged and discriminated against. So you're in L.A. at the moment. That's where you live and work. And I appreciate it. So what time is it there? Uh, it's 4.38 a.m. <laughs> OK, wow. You've had an earlier start than me. So we thank you for getting up at this time <laughs> to talk to us. Um, we'll come back to those issues that you've just flagged in a moment. The red pill, what does that refer to? Uh, well, that's a cultural slogan that comes from the movie The Matrix. And the red pill symbolizes the harsh reality, uh, the truth that is uncomfortable to deal with and to hear. And the blue pill is the alternative, uh, ignorant bliss, uh, just going along in your day-to-day -day life without knowing th this harsh reality. Uh, so the men's rights movement used the red pill metaphor in a lot of their writings. And so I started to adopt it in a way to compartmentalize the, the difference between the men's rights point of view on gender issues versus the feminist or, or mainstream point of view on gender. And what have you discovered then? Give us some examples of what you didn't know before you started making this film about this type of group. Well, you know, some of the men's issues that I learned are, in hindsight, very uh, commonsensical. Uh, so workplace deaths are 93% uh, male. And in the U.S., it's almost 5,000 uh, people die per year on the job. And, you know, 93% male, that's, that's so, a shocking number. What, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Military? What do you, when you say on uh, the job? Uh, so workplace deaths does not include military. It's uh, construction jobs, coal miners, right. fishermen, loggers. Uh, so, you know, very laborious, uh, dangerous jobs. And majority of men uh, hold those positions. So, uh, you know, I... I I guess in my, my feminist mindset, I, I should have known that, but you just never really hear that as a gender issue. Uh, so that's one issue, workplace deaths. Another is war deaths. And in the U.S., we still have selective service and only men have to register in the case of a draft. Uh, and uh, beyond but, that, but now, we have But now all parts of the military are open to women, we should say. Yes, and that was something that happened while I was filming. Uh, for the first time, women were allowed into combat positions. So when I would bring up war deaths uh, to my feminist friends and colleagues and, and say uh, almost, uh, well, roughly 99% of war, uh, war deaths are male, uh, many feminists would say, but women couldn't serve in combat positions. So there was you know, a reason that this, there was this huge gap. Uh, but now women can serve in combat positions, but we don't see uh, selective service in the U.S. being a big gender issue that, uh, you know, feminists are fighting to equalize. Uh, and, you know, also with uh, the draft, I, I have thought over the years that, that I've been making this film that uh, if a woman was in the 40s or 50s and she couldn't serve in, uh, in the military and she wished to, and then for, uh, well, in the 70s with the Vietnam War, uh, I think it was 17,000 male soldiers died that were drafted 
uh, U.S. soldiers. So, uh, you know, when I start to conceptualize these uh, gender issues in, in the way of kind of who has it worse, because I always wanted to bring it back to, well, women have it worse, right? I've always known this to be true. Uh, but, you know, in, in this case, I don't know which is worse. If uh, a woman couldn't serve in combat and she wanted to, or a man was drafted and he died and he want, didn't want to go to war. Why do the two have to be pitted against each other? That's a great question. And that's something I've asked myself, you know, for three and a half years that I'm making this film. Uh, I've been asking that to myself because I, I had my own walls up with really listening to men's issues and having immediate compassion for men's issues. I, I there, there was... Uh, there was a learning curve for me to really first learn the information of men's issues and then to go as far to say that this is a problem and we need to focus on this and then ask why as a society we aren't focusing on this and why are we, we are very focused on women's issues and I think that's important. I, I, I you know, I, I believe in gender equality across the board so just because I made a film about men's issues doesn't mean I care any less about women or uh, girls being empowered. Uh, so, but, you know, I'm, I hope this film does add men to the gender equality discussion. Why did it not get funding from certain groups? Oh, well, uh, I, I applied to many grants and never made it through the first uh, round. And oftentimes there's three rounds until you get a film grant. And uh, so that didn't work out well. And, and then I went to my previous angel investors for my previous films that, that focused on women's issues. And they said that they didn't want to see a film about the men's rights movement. And they were upset that I was giving them a platform to speak. I, I commonly heard that. But some people yeah. have had issues with certain men's rights activists, whether that's, you know, slanging matches online or, you know, people have different experiences of them not being necessarily as open to other people. Yeah, and that's absolutely true. I, I think with the men's rights movement, as with any movement, you have outliers, uh, radicals who, uh, you know, give uh, the whole group bad branding. And, uh, you know, I definitely see that with feminism. I see that in the men's rights movement. I've seen that in other movements. I, I think that's just one of the, you know, something that we have to recognize that is a part of many movements. Uh, and so with my film, I, I tried to steer away from uh, dissecting every comment that sounded misogynistic because for every misogynistic comment I could find, I could also find a feminist comment that, I would disagree with, like, you know, hashtag kill all men or, or I bathe in male tears, that kind of stuff. Oh, come on, that's a bit lazy, uh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, no, but so I mean, I, that's, I think that's a bit lazy by you, if you don't mind me saying, with, with a oh. hashtag that's popular amongst women. You know, there's lots of... I'm sitting right now in front of a 16-year-old girl guide and I don't think she would ever dream of using a phrase like that. She's shaking her head. She's my editor today, my guest editor. I mean, I, I think when you typify something like that, that's just as lazy as the people you're accusing of who criticise men's rights activists. Well, I, I shouldn't say I exclude any kind of uh, crude language from the film. I, I definitely call out many of the things that men's rights activists say, their, their crude language and some of their articles that say... Uh, October is Bash a Violent Bitch Month. I address that uh, comment in the film. Uh, but at the same time, there's so many men's issues and elements of the men's rights platform that I barely had enough time to cover all of those men's issues. I'm not, so de I'm I not, I'm not denying that, but I'll put something else too, which I think is, is interesting. And I was reading a, a writer only the other day in a paper on this side of the pond saying this, which is there's a Conservative MP who has spoken up recently and he he has said that when he's been talking about International Men's Day and listening to men's issues, he laid a lot of the blame for some of the issues that men are facing at the women's movement's feet, at feminism's feet. And I suppose what it's almost what I said to you a few questions ago, which is why did the two have to be in war with each other? And what I didn't understand from what he had put forward to the House of Commons, this is Philip Davis, he was saying that, you know, who's blaming women and blaming feminism for the issues that men face. And I, I wondered if you agreed with that, because that's what seemed to be odd. Well, uh, so the reason why I, I, I guess, sounded like I was trivial, trivializing their comments is because I, I think the, the bigger 
uh, discussion to have is the discrepancy between the platforms of the men's rights movement and the feminist movement. And the, the biggest way that they're different is that feminists believe we live in a patriarchy, that men have oppressed women throughout history. And men's rights activists do not believe it's that simple. They don't, they don't see a, a patriarchy in the way that feminists see the world. So that's the some of the some of them, some of them mm-hmm. don't, and some women don't view it necessarily like. I mean, I, d- I think all of this is 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 quite crude generalizations at times. Well, it, it could be. I mean, definitely everyone that I've uh, spoken to over, over my three and a half years of making this film, and I live in California, and mm. I have many, you know, all my circles were feminist friends. Uh, that I, I've never met a feminist that didn't believe we live in a patriarchy. Uh, but if it's different in the UK, that's definitely something to note. Well, some people just might. I mean, I spoke to a woman who works on a fish market a few moments ago. She's got absolutely no view like that of the world, but she she has her equality and she believes in it and nobody's going to mess with her. I mean, so I don't think everybody views the world as if you're doing this as men, you know, this is necessarily oppressing me as a woman. I think we may have moved beyond that point. But I, I take your point that the people you've been speaking to see that that lens on the world. Cassie, where, the red pill, is it out, is out now? Uh, yes, we have a screening in London tonight uh, at UCL. And uh, we're doing screenings all around the world. It's a grassroots effort. So people are hosting their own screenings and will be available online in a couple months. I will be very intrigued to see it. So I will make sure I get that link when I can. And thank you very much for coming on to talk to me. And I'm sorry you had to wake up so early. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having me. Best of luck with it. That's Cassie there, who's the maker, Cassie J, of a new film called The Red Pill. Some messages coming in on that. Can women be liberated if men aren't? At last, at last, we're talking about the inequalities against men. Hallelujah. I hope you're listening, Women's Equality Party. You see, that's it, isn't it? I don't know who that text is from. It's anonymous, quite interestingly. But it doesn't have to be one or the other, does it? And another one here, where is the campaign to get more male teachers? What about the massive advantage females have in life expectancy? Well, we can't do anything about that, can we? Where's the campaign there? What, to make men live longer? Feminism has serious tunnel vision. And then another one here, so women now have equal rights to die in combat in pointless wars. Great. Uh, Stephen Cornwall, very nice message that's just come in here. Wife and four daughters, maybe one day I will be equal to them all. Lovely stuff. Well...